Hare Krishna. And now we have glories of the holy name by our special guest, Her Grace Rukmani Mataji. She is a direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada, who has been practicing Krishna consciousness for 50 years plus. And she is an activist in interfaith dialogue and women's spiritual empowerment. She is the founder of Urban Devi uh, to help inspire women in the 21st century in their devotional lives. Uh, there will be, uh, this class is live right now by Mataji first. We'll have a class. And then after that, we're gonna have Q and A. So I really want everybody to have your questions ready. And then after the class, we will do the Q and A. And so if you want ISKCON Desire Tree, you can check on their YouTube and start typing in your questions. If you're on Facebook, our ISKCON Kirtan Ministry, you can start typing and put in your questions. And if you don't speak English, don't worry. We have Mayapur TV who are translating this into Spanish, Hindi, and Russian. So head over there. And so now without further ado, I really want to welcome Her Grace Rukmini Mataji. So Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so Thank much for you. inviting me. Thank you so much for coming. So Mataji, over to you and uh, we'll do Q&A after. Thank you. By offering a few prayers to all the great teachers who come before me. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Sarasate Deve Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Mukam Karoti Vachalam Hangolangayate Girim Yat kripas tamang bande shi gurun dinatadanam Bancha kapataru biascha kripa shindu baevata patitanam pavane bio vaishna vibio namo namaha Jai shi krishna chaitana prabhu nityananda Shri adwaita gadada shi vasati gora bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you so much for inviting me um, to this World Holy Name Festival. I'd like to speak from what I've heard in, in disciplic succession from Srila Prabhupada and our line of teachers and pray to all the listeners who are with us today to please bless me that I can come to some point of realizing um, what I'll be speaking also. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, fourth chapter, it's explained that when the time for promulgating the religion of the age arose, Lord Chaitanya appeared with his devotees and he tasted the nectar of Premanam Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name. He spread kirtan even amongst the untouchables. He wove a wreath of the holy name and prema with which he garlanded the entire material world. So this verse points to the future appearance of Srila Prabhupada who carried Krishna's holy name on the order of his Guru Maharaj and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu across the seven oceans and seven seas. Aboard the cargo ship Jaladuta in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, in abject and utter humility, giving all credit to his Guru Maharaj and foreseeing the future, Srila Prabhupada prayed 
for the mercy of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to manifest the chanting of the holy names throughout the earth. Srila Prabhupada prayed, uh, again, invoking the mercy of his Guru Maharaj. He said, his desire is very powerful and thus he is causing the holy name of Lord Goranga to manifest throughout the countries of the Western world, in all the cities, towns, and villages of the earth, extending to all the oceans, rivers, and streams. Everyone is chanting the holy names of Krishna and Rama. They will become so blissful chanting that all directions will be conquered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's abundant mercy. When all the miserable living entities in the world who have been tormented by Maya become truly happy, then the Vaishnava's prayer will be fulfilled. So this is from Srila Prabhupada's prayer to the lotus feet of Krishna on board the ship Jaladuta. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains some of the misunderstandings that create obstacles and prohibit people from chanting the holy name of Krishna. Some people consider the practice to be only for sentimentalists or something sectarian or because of holding an impersonal conception of the absolute. So we condition souls, our names are different from our bodies and our bodies keep changing over and over again at the, every time we um, have a juncture of birth and death. But Lord Chaitanya explained that the Lord's holy name, his form, and, and his personality are all one and the same. There is no difference between them. All of them are absolute, and they are all transcendentally blissful. There is no difference between Krishna's body and himself or between his name and himself. Nama chintamani krishnas chaitanya rasa vigraha Purna sudho nitya mukto binatvam nama namino. This is from the Padma Purana. The holy name of Krishna is transcendentally blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions because it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of all pleasure. Krishna's name is complete and it is the form of all transcendental mellows. It's not a material name under any condition. And it's no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities, there's no question of its being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. This is because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. Material senses can't appreciate Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. And when a conditioned soul like ourselves is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service uh, by using his tongue to chant Krishna's na name or to taste the remnants of the Lord's food, the tongue becomes purified and one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. So this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila. In his first verse of Sikshastakam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains seven benedictions that flow from the chanting of the holy name and, and inspire us to acquire deep faith in the holy name. So the first verse um, is linked, the first verse of his Sikshastakam is linked um, to the first stage of devotion or shraddha, faith. Let there be all victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna, which can cleanse the mirror of the heart and stop the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence. That chanting is the waxing moon that spreads the white lotus of good fortune for all living entities. It is the life and soul of all education. The chanting of the holy name of Krishna expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life. It gives a cooling effect to everyone and enables one to taste full nectar at every step. So in this first verse, uh, first verse of his Sikshastakam prayers, Lord Chaitanya explains 
that there are seven benedictions for uh, to chanting Lord Krishna's holy name. And in the first verse, the glories of the holy name are illuminated and we embark on this path of faith to begin the practice of chanting. Really, we have to have faith to do anything, right? To, to just uh, do anything in the, this world, someone has some kind of faith. So the first benediction is cheto darpana marginam. The chanting of Lord Krishna's names cleanses the mirror of our polluted hearts, which resemble a mirror covered by the dust of innumerable material impressions. And these impressions are collected over many, many lives and prevent us from recognizing our own spiritual form as the soul. So these are treacherous contaminations that cover the mirror of our consciousness and cause us to reject our true nature. Krishna's name can free our consciousness from these internal obstacles. So the original spiritual mind is free from the dust of material coverings. And by chanting the holy name, this dust is removed and that spiritual state of the mind becomes reestablished. The spiritual mind allows us to again recognize the real form of the soul, like someone who's awakened from a terrible dream. By constantly chanting, taking complete shelter of the holy name, we can gradually perceive the reflection of our original form as the servant of Lord Krishna in the mirror of our consciousness. And the con Contaminations that cover the mirror of consciousness are swept away by chanting the holy name because it is the embodiment of profound spiritual bliss. So Krishna, his holy name, form, qualities, pastimes are all attractive. And the name Krishna means all attractive. But why are we not attracted to this all attractive person? What does that say about us? A magnet naturally attracts metal filings unless it's covered by rust. And there are eons of lifetimes of rust on our hearts. So this chanting of Krishna's holy name cleanses the mirror of the heart and enables us to again awaken our natural attraction to the all-attractive Lord Sri Krishna. And we can awaken to see ourselves, see the world, and see God or Krishna in reality. But if we're disturbed by every rub, how can the mirrors of our hearts become polished? I think we need to ask ourselves that question. The second benediction is Bhava Maha Devagni Nirvarpanam, that the holy name, that the devotee becomes protected from material existence. Our material existence is sometimes sweet and pleasurable for some time. But the reality we don't usually see is that our momentary temporal existence in this world is like being in a fire in the depths of the forest, which can sometimes burn the entire forest to ashes. When we have no faith in Lord Krishna, we have to constantly tolerate the searing, burning pain of this forest fire. But when we awaken attachment, to chanting Krishna's holy names with attention and affection, we become protected from these scorching flames, even though we're in the midst of the forest fire of the material world. Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings in his Sri Nama Mahatmya, what power does the holy name of Krishna possess? My heart constantly burns in the fire of worldly desires, just like a desert scorched by the rays of the sun. The holy name entering the core of my heart through the holes of my ears shows, showers unparalleled nectar upon my soul. In the Srimad Bhagavatam first canto, it's explained that living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously 
chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by fear itself. King Kulashekar prays in his beautiful Mukunda Mala Stotra. He says, this body's beauty is fleeting, and at last the body must succumb to death after its hundreds of joints have become stiff with old age. So why, bewildered fool, are you asking for medication? Just take the elixir of Lord Krishna's holy names the one cure that never fails. And in the Garuda, Garuda Purana, it said, if one chants the holy name of the Lord, even in a helpless condition or without desiring to do so, all the reactions of his sinful life depart, just as when a lion roars, all the small animals flee in fear. So the third benediction, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitarinam, is the wholehearted chanting of Lord Krishna's holy name that blesses the chanter with the highest goodness and munificence um, or abundance. Munificence means like a kind of abundance. Shreya means benediction, Kairava means a white lily, and Chandrika are the rays of the moon. Just as by the illuminating rays of the rising moon, the lily's white beauty is highlighted in the night. Did you ever notice a flower, a white flower at night? It shows up so much more in the darkness. So in the same way, the chanting of Krishna's name brings out the best in us and enlightens this darkened universe, showering it with divine benediction. In this world, we don't really experience deep fulfillment in chasing our material desires or our intellectual pursuits. But chanting Krishna's name blesses us with the greatest benedictions. The Skanda Purana is quoted in the Hari Bhakti Vilas. It says, the holy name of Krishna is the highest benediction above any other benedictions. It is sweeter than the sweetest honey, the eternal fruit of transcendental knowledge of the tree of the entire scriptures. If anyone chants Lord Krishna's name just once without offense, whether he chants with faith or even indifferently, the holy name immediately liberates him. The fourth benediction of the holy name is transcendental knowledge or vidyavadu jivanam. Chanting is the life and soul of all knowledge. The Sanskrit word vadu means bride. In the heart of a devotee who chants the holy name, Bhakti Devi, the bride of the Lord, appears together with her two sons, knowledge and renunciation. Chanting evokes transcendental knowledge in the heart and naturally relieves one from the unhealthy grip of material attachments. Chanting induces us to break the shackles of false ego and false prestige, which are products of material knowledge, and elevates us to understand our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. Therefore, the ultimate focus of real transcendental knowledge is chanting Krishna's holy name. This understanding that the chanting of Krishna's holy name is the life of all transcendental knowledge is explained in the Garuda Purana. O oh, best of kings, if you desire to acquire that extraordinary knowledge by which the supreme goal is realized, then chant Lord Govinda's name with love and devotion. The fifth benediction, Anandam Buddhivardhanam, is that chanting the holy name expands the boundless ocean of spiritual bliss and enables us to fully relish the sweetest nectar at every moment. Only a vast expanse of water is called an ocean, nothing less than that. 
So unlimited bliss is compared to an ocean. Transcendental experiences like these are eternal and without imperfections. They are constant and fully present. The body, the mind, and above them the soul all become purified and gradually take on a tenderness and cooling sheen in touch with Krishna's holy name. In Sri Bhagavatam, eighth canto, it said, unalloyed devotees who have no desire other than to serve the Lord, worship him in full surrender and always hear and chant about his activities, which are most wonderful and auspicious. They, such devotees, are always merged in an ocean of transcendental bliss. Such devotees never need to ask the Lord for any benedictions. But still, the Lord keeps giving more and more of them. And the sixth benediction, Pratipadam Purnamrita Svadhanam, chanting the holy name, awards complete and sublime nectar. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes in his Sri Nam Mahatmya, The holy name is the bud of the flower of divine love and is the very abode of astonishing mellows such is the power Krishna manifests that when his holy name starts to blossom a little further, it then reveals his own divine forms and qualities. Thus my heart is abducted and taken directly to Krishna. Blossoming fully, the flower of the holy name takes me to Vraja and reveals to me his own love dalliance or, or play, that means. This name gives to me my own eternal spiritual body, keeps me right by Krishna's side, and completely destroys everything related to this mortal frame of mind. The name of Krishna is a transcendental touchstone, a mine of all devotional mellows. It is eternally liberated and the embodiment of pure rasa. When all impediments to the pure chanting of the holy name are taken away and destroyed, then my happiness will know its true awakening. And finally, the seventh benediction, Sarvatma Snapanam, chanting the holy name has a cooling effect and a refreshing effect on everyone. The desire to enjoy material life to its utmost extent is like a spreading fever or fire which tempts us to act sinfully even against our own will. But by chanting the holy name, this fever is relieved. The holy name releases us from designations, the gross and subtle contaminations that shadow us in the material conception of life, and our material life comes to an end. We, be, we become eager to reach Lord Krishna and engage in devotional service under the cooling shade of his lotus feet. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it said, when people properly glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead or simply hear about his potencies, the Lord personally enters their hearts and cleanses away every trace of misfortune just as the sun removes the darkness or a powerful wind disperses the clouds. The chanting of the holy name is the highest victory or attainment and the essence or essential ingredient in all devotional service. Srila Jiva Goswami describes in his Bhakti Sandarbha that in the Kali Yuga, all forms of devotional service must be performed in conjunction with chanting Krishna's victorious holy name. From the Namastika of Srila Rupa Goswami, he says, O oh, holy name of Krishna, you are the life-sustaining elixir of Sri Narada Muni's vena, the exhilarating waves on the ocean of nectar. Therefore, I beg you to remain dancing eternally, ecstatically on my tongue. But how can we glorify Krishna's holy name without understanding the mood 
in which the holy name is to be chanted. So in the first verse of Sikshastakam, the glories of the holy name are described, the reasons to place our faith in the holy name. And in the second verse, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu addresses the next three stages of advancement, sadhu sangha, or associating with saintly devotees, bhajana kriya, serving in devotion, and anartha nivriti, giving up unwanted habits. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on our behalf expresses his lamentation that Lord Sri Krishna has invested all his infinite divine potencies in his most merciful form, his holy name, which is accessible everywhere and always, blessing us with all good fortune. But we are so unfortunate that we continue to disregard his extraordinary mercy. We remain inattentive or distracted, lethargic, or just plain apathetic. We're so unfortunate. We continue to blindly turn away from Krishna's personal presence in his holy name because we're being lulled to sleep all the time by the slow poison of our worldliness. In the third verse of Sikshastakam, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uplifts and illuminates the quality of humility in one who's free from unwanted material desires or this anartha nivriti and attains the stage of nista or firm and steady faith. He says, one who thinks himself lower than the grass, who is more tolerant than a tree, who does not expect personal honor, but is always prepared to give all respect to others, can very easily always chant the holy name of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya says, if one chants the holy name of Lord Krishna in this manner, he will certainly awaken his dormant love for Krishna's lotus feet. And he says, raising my hands, I declare, everyone, please hear me. String this verse on the thread of the holy name and wear it around your neck for continuous remembrance. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in his Shri Samodana Basham, the devotee who chants the holy name offenselessly is adorned with four very special qualities, a natural meekness and humility because of complete detachment from matter. The second one, a pure compassion unencumbered by envy. The third one is a spotless heart free from mundane false prestige. And finally, a respectful attitude toward everyone. So I really feel that these four special qualities are so exemplified in Srila Prabhupada. His mood of, mood of humility in chanting, he explained to us that we should chant just like a child desperately crying for its mother. This is the mood of an urgent, longing separation. And there are two other things, two other nice quotes from Prabhupada. Once Prabhupada was asked, how should we chant the holy name? And he said so beautifully, oh, my friend, oh, my friend, oh, my friend. And then once again, he was asked how to chant. He said, please give me strength. I am fallen. I have no strength. Please accept me, O Krishna. I am frail. I am trying, but I am failing. Such humility. So by acquiring deep faith in the holy name, a devotee quickly obtains the stage of ruchi, or a steady taste for chanting. With ruchi, a devotee experiences a loss of all desire for personal aggrandizement and becomes fixed in unalloyed devotion, which is exemplified in the fourth verse of Sikshastakam. O Lord of the universe, I do not desire material wealth, materialistic followers, a beautiful wife or husband, or fruitive activities described in flowery language. All I want life after life is unmotivated devotional service to you. The fifth verse 
is the stage of Krishna Ashakti, where a devotee chants the holy name, recognizing his fallen condition and awaits the causeless mercy of the Lord. O my Lord, O Krishna, O son of Maharaj Nanda, I am your eternal servant, but because of my own fruitive acts, I have fallen into this horrible ocean of nations. Now please be causelessly merciful to me. Consider me a particle of dust at your lotus feet. The sixth verse of Sikshastakam reveals the bodily transformations of a devotee who chants the holy name in bhava, or ecstatic love for Krishna. My dear Lord, when will my eyes be beautified? By filling with tears that constantly glide down as I chant your holy name. When will my voice falter and all the hairs of my body stand erect in transcendental happiness as I chant your holy name? When bhava softens the heart completely, a great feeling of possessiveness for the Lord becomes condensed and intensified. This is prema, pure love of God. The internal symptom of this devotion is when a devotee worships Krishna in a mood of separation. This mood reached its pinnacle of perfection by the gopis of Vrindavan, headed by Srimati Radharani. This is the seventh verse. My Lord Govinda, because of separation from you, I consider even a moment a great millennium. Tears flow from my eyes like torrents of rain, and I see the entire world as void. And then finally, in the eighth and final verse of Lord Chaitanya Sikh Shastakam prayers, he exemplifies the selfless mood of Sri Radhika, calling out to Krishna in samboga or union, being completely dependent on Krishna's own sweet will and praying like this. Let Lord Krishna tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen at his lotus feet or trample him. Let him trample me. Let him trample me. Break my heart by never being visible to me. He is a debauchee after all and can do whatever he likes, but he is still no one other than the worshipable Lord of my heart. In conclusion, I'd like to quote this poignant verse in praise of Krishna's holy name from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, again in his Sambodhana Bhastyam. The sturdy boat of your holy name is the only means of crossing over this dangerous ocean of material existence. Considering all these facts with a level head, I begged for the invincible boat of your holy name from my guru, which he gave me by his causeless mercy. O oh Lord, you are the renowned protector of your devotees, who are souls surrendered to your lotus feet. Therefore, please accept this homeless, destitute person. Cleanse me of all my faults and consider me as a particle of dust at your lotus feet. And from the Adi Purana, there is no vow like chanting the holy name, no knowledge superior to it, no meditation which comes anywhere near it, and it gives the highest result. No penance is equal to it, and nothing is as potent as the holy name. Chanting is the greatest act of piety and the supreme refuge. Even the words of the Vedas do not possess sufficient power to describe its magnitude. Chanting is the highest path to liberation, peace, and eternal life. It is the pinnacle of devotion, the heart's joyous proclivity and attraction, and the best form of remembrance of the Supreme Lord. The Holy Name has appeared solely for the benefit of the living entities as their Lord and Master, their supreme worshipable object, and their spiritual guide and mentor. And last of all, in the Adi Purana, Lord Krishna speaks his gratitude to those who chant his holy name. O Arjuna, listen attentively. 
when the living entity chants my name, whether out of devotion or indifference, then his name will remain forever in my heart. I will never forget such a soul. So there's one other thing I wanted to add at the very end here. When I was a, a young devotee uh, in Montreal, Canada, Srila Prabhupada was speaking from the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj in his prayers was praying, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. And one devotee asked a question at the end of Srila Prabhupada's lecture. And she was saying, but Prabhupada, how can we say my Lord? How can we say my anything if we're supposed to give up possessiveness? And Srila Prabhupada answered in such a beautiful way that I think is so important for all of us to hear. He said, nothing is mine, uh, but Krishna is mine and he is yours and he is everyone's. That's all. So it was like a great Mahavakya spoken by Srila Prabhupada. Krishna is mine. He is yours. He is everyone's. That's all. So we should chant in this mood of possessiveness, understanding that the only thing that's actually mine is Krishna himself and his beautiful holy name. So thank you all so very much. Parang Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Thank you. you so much. Now we can hear. <laughs> I was so taken away by that class that uh, my voice went. <laughs> we had the benedictions. We had the shishashtakam. And then some amazing quotes. I love the part where Srila Prabhupada says, chant out like, oh, my friend, oh, my friend. Oh, yes. Uh, so that's just, that just really touched. Uh, so thank you for deepening our uh, love for the holy name. It was an amazing session. And Thank you. And now we want to have some question and answers. And I know some people are eagerly waiting. Those that haven't yet asked their questions, please type them in um, on the Facebook Iskong Kirtan Ministry page or on our Hare Krishna TV page, what is under the Iskong Desire Tree on YouTube. So either those places, please put them there and then we will start now. So the first question has come up is from Ami Anand. Uh, and she says, Hare Krishna, how can we explain these glories and encourage chanting to someone who is completely new to the holy name, Hare Bo? <laughs> well, thank you for this nice question. I think if we start by saying so many glories of the holy name that might sound impossible and preposterous, preposterous to someone, maybe the person might think that we're just telling fairy tales. Mm. So maybe start with something small, like if you chant the holy name, you'll be relieved of suffering. You'll, you'll meet your dearest friend in the holy name. And I love the point also that the holy name is so portable. You can take the holy name with you everywhere. You can be walking down the street. You can be standing in line at the pharmacy. You can be cooking dinner, working in your office, sitting in a meeting, but the chant chanting of the holy name comes with you everywhere. So I think maybe that is a good answer. Start with something small and digestible that will increase their appetite, right? And yes. in a good, a good Indian meal, they give you something to increase your appetite at the beginning. They don't flood you with sweets at the very beginning. I love it. So that's a very nice way of putting it. So start, give a little bit. Don't just give the whole, 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 whole prashad and plate. <laughs> so very nice. So no, thank you so much for that. And now we have uh, a question from uh, Shitalangi Radha. She says, what are the steps we should carry out in our life without fail so that we can remain steady in devotional life? Mm. Beautiful question. So if we think of of the holy name as sort of lighting this this beautiful light under us that will keep us connected to krishna um, we have to think about if you're lighting a fire what will what will put that fire out and what will increase 
the light and the continuous burning of that fire. So there are always things that you know within yourself, I know within myself, each one of us knows there may be certain friends who you just have to say, you know, it's best that I'm not spending so much time with these mm. particular gossipy friends or the ones who love to criticize or all of those different ways where that little new, that little tender flame in our devotional service can easily be kind of um, extinguished. Mm -hmm. I mean, in one sense, it's never extinguished because Krishna will always, always be with us, but it's up to us to keep that, that little light shining all the time. So you'll know in yourself, um, maybe it's staying up too late at night. Maybe it's, talking too much with the wrong people. Maybe it's looking at media that is can be so destructive, so toxic. I think for many of us, the internet can be very toxic, or mm. if not toxic, just a plain waste of time. So we have to use, uh, time is precious, time is a form of Krishna, and we have to use our time wisely in order to keep that, that little flame burning in our hearts. And um, and help that little flame um, ignite in other people also, because someone who's sincere on the path of devotion, just like if you're tasting something yummy, you naturally want to share it. Oh, you have to taste this. Mm -hmm. They've never made such a yummy sweet at this temple before. You've got to taste this. So in the same way, if we're inspired to, to chant and share the holy name, we'll, we'll want to be able to communicate it to others. So I think maybe that's a little bit of an answer for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Sitalangi Radha. And I'd like to, Prashant Sharma, get straight, straight to the point. I like this. Why do we say Hare Krishna mantra as Maha Mantra? Because there's so many mantras. I mean, Krishna's names are as innumerable as the waves on the ocean. Every culture of the world has names of God. Krishna's put his holy names everywhere in, in the whole world for all times. Every religious tradition glorifies the name of God. But this particular mantra is very special because it is called the Jugala Mantra. It is the combined names of Radha and Krishna. So in this mantra, we have the really the loving embrace. Krishna likes to hear Radharani's name. Sometimes it's said, uh, that if Krishna just hears someone say the first syllable, Ra, he comes running. Mm -hmm. He loves to hear someone say, and Hare is Radha, Hare, one who takes away the miseries. And um, so this is a Jugala mantra. It's a combined, condensed uh, form of this loving embrace of Radha and Krishna. Sometimes you see in Vrindavan or other places, a painting of Radha and Krishna where they're embracing and they're all entwined with one another. And mm. it's said that this is a picture of the holy name of Krishna, the Maha Mantra. So that's why this mantra is very, very special. And it's given by Lord Chaitanya and given by Srila Prabhupada. So it comes with the highest recommendation. Sometimes I know in, in the UK they have, what is it? They have sometimes on the label of a product, by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, yeah. right? Yes. And in the US, they have the good housekeeping seal of approval on certain products. So this Maha Mantra has, um, the, by appointment to Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it has the best seal of approval giving by, given by our line of acharyas. Sometimes people come up with other mantras, but this mantra is given by the greatest chanters of the holy name of Krishna. So, What an amazing way to put it, as a seal of approval. I love that. <laughs> so just remember, everyone, it's got a seal of approval by Srila Prabhupada. And we can chant this. Uh, so thank you so much. This is the reason. It's Maha Mantra. Um, we've had a question now from uh, Nandini Jagbir. It says, Hare Krishna, for beginners, how much round should we chant? <laughs> well, everyone's a little different. And um, I might say something to you that might be counterproductive. And you have to know what you can do uh, with uh, 
it's good to be in the stretch zone, not in the lethargy zone or the pain zone. So as you're beginning and trying to accumulate a little, acquire a little bit of taste for chanting, try chanting one round every day. And if you can, make a promise um, that you'll do that one round every day. It's, it's best to stick with a number and then not go back to a lower number. So when you feel some strong footing with one round every day, then you could increase to two. I know uh, one of our ISKCON gurus had a disciple who was telling me, a, a prospective disciple who was telling him, it's impossible to chant 16 rounds a day. I could never do that. And so this guru advised, well, um, every year you can add one round. So this man who was a busy, he was a CPA, a busy, busy man in his profession. And every year he would add one round. But um, as you're able, um, if you're able to increase, but it's best to not go back to a lower number because it's kind of like a promise that you're trying to make to Krishna. So like when you promise your kids that there's going to be some kind of a sweet after dinner, if you don't give them that sweet after dinner, there's a like a withdrawal in the emotional bank account with your kids. So Krishna, he never will be unhappy, but still we like to keep that relationship intact. So I would suggest um, do what you can in your own heart and, and pray to Krishna to give you intelligence um, and give you a taste for the chanting of the holy name, little by little. Thank you so much. I've had a little quote coming from Kamea Devi. She says, you'll meet your dearest friend in the holy name. Her grace, Rukmani Walker, she's put, of course. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you. Get these uh, gems out today, you know, <laughs> share these. Please do share this page uh, on Facebook. You go on YouTube. Let's get everyone asking questions. We have just under 13 minutes to go. So let's get some more questions coming. So I have here, and, and I like this name of this, uh, this person. They're called <laughs> Hare Krishnas. Uh, so the Hare Krishnas are asking, Hare Krishna, myself, okay, there he is, Raja Shaker. My question is, how can I improve connection with my Krishna? I like how you put that. <laughs> how can I know the connection is working to close, close me, uh, cl um, working to close, bring me closer to Krishna? That's what I think is trying to ask. Namaskar Mataji. Beautiful. So I think the answer would be, if you're feeling some, some sweetness, if you're feeling some taste for the holy name, because Srimati Radharani is Krishna's pleasure potency. And when we feel pleasure in devotional service, in chanting Krishna's name, if we feel some joy in kirtan, this is the grace of Radharani. I mean, even in the material world, if we feel happiness in material activities, that is by the grace of the Reflected, reflection of Radharani Durga Devi, but that happiness is temporary. So we can pray to Radha and Krishna, please give me some taste for serving you and chanting your holy name. And if you do a little service for Krishna, um, whatever that may be, you'll find that you your taste for the holy name will increase. And if you your taste for the holy name increases in Kirtan or in Japa, then you'll naturally feel inclined to want to do some service for Krishna. If you're over at one of his temples, you might want to just pick up a broom and, and sweep or pick up some things that maybe some cups, paper cups are thrown around on the ground, pick them up, or any service to Krishna. So if you serve Krishna, that will spark your uh, desire to taste his holy name. And chanting his holy name will spark your desire to serve him more and more because all of these are forms of krishna his name his form his qualities his pastimes uh, listening to his pastimes listening to krishna book um, listening to any um, anything from Srimad bhagavatam or these holy scriptures will all increase your taste for chanting and it it's uh it's like they say love is round it keeps going around and around so uh, <laughs> Keep increasing the taste however you can. Wow. Thank you so much. Just keep it going. It goes round and around. 
<laughs> We've got one uh, question coming uh, from one of our uh, ambassadors uh, for the World Holy Name Festival. She's looking after um, making sure we get this out in all parts of India and doing a sterling, sterling service. So Madhavi Gauri Mataji, her name is. Thank uh, you. And she, and she asks, Hare Krishna, which one practice, apart from chanting, which helps us to remember Krishna throughout the day? As usually during chanting, we feel some connection, but once it's over, the daily grind takes you. <laughs> so let it never be over because uh, the continuous chanting of the holy name is what's recommended. And uh, you can pray to Krishna to remind you to always chant the holy name when you're in the shower, when you're walking down the street, whatever you're doing. But also, if you read about Krishna and learn about some of his qualities or some of his pastimes, then you'll be reminded more and more. And, and they will be the holy name, the qualities, the pastimes will all be reflecting and increasing. Just like if you shine a light in a mirror with a mirror behind you, there will be infinite images reflected. So I think it's meant to be continuous. But I think what we tend to do is is put the uh, put ourselves in that little fire, and then we take our little candle out, and then we again put it back, and then take it out. It's meant to be continuous. So, and the more we know about Krishna, um, I want to share a story. One of my very dear friends was um, in a in a religious school of another tradition, not uh, not this tradition, and they were telling her. Uh, God is the supreme being. God is the supreme being. And she was just a young child, and she said, but, but what is he being? <laughs> it was so charming. But, but what is he being? And the teacher said, oh, you're a troublemaker. Don't ask those kinds of questions. But Srila Prabhupada has given us so much information about what he is being, how he is being, where he is being. What's his name, his form, his qualities? What's his address, Prabhupada likes to say. His address, he lives in Vrindavan. What's his father's name? What's his mother's name? So by learning all these details, um, then we can focus on Krishna more and more and more, that he has a little karna, karnikara flower tucked behind his one ear. Mm -hmm. And all these little details are, are meant for remembering and igniting more and more remembrance in our hearts. Learning prayers, uh, your own prayers. You can always be vocalizing the prayers of your own heart and learning the prayers of, of great devotees. I know Srila Prabhupada, in times of difficulty or danger, he would always chant the prayers of Kunti Devi. So there are so many beautiful prayers that we can chant to help us remember Krishna's kindness, Krishna's gratitude, so many beautiful stories and nectar of devotion. So all of these will help us um, to make this remembrance and chanting continuously. And I think also Krishna is sitting in our hearts and he's just waiting to hear what, what we want. I was hearing Prabhupada in a lecture the other morning say that just as Krishna was driving Arjuna's chariot, he's actually driving the, in, he's the driver for all of us. Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting for orders. Okay, where do you want to go? And And so he's waiting. So if you, Explain to him, my dear Lord Krishna, oh my friend, oh my friend, oh my friend, I want to be reminded to always chant your holy name continuously. I want to be reminded, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Where am I committing mistakes? How am I maybe offending other people? How can I, how can I improve? What can I do better? And then Krishna will little by little help you um, because he says, I carry what you lack, right? So in all these ways, he's just waiting to hear. Otherwise, he's sitting in our heart unemployed, right? What's he doing there? He's waiting for us to turn to him. We keep turning away from him. He's waiting for us to turn to him. <laughs> wow. wow. Thank you. I've had a, a comment come through. Many comments have come through. Forgive me, everybody, if I can't get to all of you. Uh, but... Uh, Rajendra Prashad says, Hare Krishna Mataji, we are really blessed to have guidance from you. All glories to you, my Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. So thank you uh, for this. 
And before we go on, one other area I thought uh, I had a question. Uh, and, and for everybody, if you want to know more about Rukmani Mataji, she has some amazing projects. You probably heard what I said about before. Um, so I just want to just share something right now to on the screen. Uh, and this is called Urban Devi, Conscious and Contemporary. Um, and I just, I wanted to ask you actually, it's such a beautiful, I love the site. And uh, of course, people can connect to you from this site. Uh, and, and just a little bit about the site, if you don't mind. So if anybody wants to connect with you uh, and through this site, how they can do that. Yes, this is uh, urbandavy.com. Please join us. You can give us your email address and um, be regularly receiving our blogs that we write. It's uh, really meant to uplift the voices of the Vaishnavis around the world. So please send us your poetry or your thoughts or um, many different voices are there, not only my own. But um, yes, it's trying to trying to uplift the vi uh, voices of the Vaishnavis around the world. So thank you so much. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so it's www.urbandevi.com. So please check it out. It was a very nice read. Uh, I checked it out today. And um, thank you for your, your efforts in this way of trying to bring out the positivities and showing the strengths of all of us, how we can serve Krishna, how we can serve Prabhupada. So it's really, really amazing to see. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. So if you wanted to know more, it's urbandavy.com. It's there right now. I'll keep it there. And I'm just going to just uh, get a few more questions. And this is a nice one as well here. Sandeep Nimai, it gets late to sleep due to work, which is other best, which is the other best time other than morning hours for chanting. Mm. That's a tough one because the morning is so sacred and so special. But if you can find a time when you're not going to be distracted and you can always do um, little, little add-ons, I would say, if you, if you can light a candle and make it very special, if you can light a candle, light some incense and make sure you're not getting disturbed, um, then you can make other times sacred also. But you have to let the people that your people in your family, your kids, it's funny to hear, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur used to chant in a closet. And he had about 12 or 14 kids. And so he used to go into a closet to chant Japa. So wherever you won't be distracted, and it is very hard when you're working late and, and you don't have those special morning hours. So if you can get your mm -hmm. work schedule shifted, try to. I would suggest that, but if not, just make it sacred, however you can. Make it sacred. Don't allow there to be interruptions. It's always nice to hear the recording of Prabhupada chanting Japa a little bit softly so you can hear. But chanting, it's nice if it's a, a fully sensual experience. So engage the tongue, engage the ear, engage the sense of smell, engage the sense of touch, and then try to be without distractions. So for that, you'll need cooperation from your family members. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. So we're, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our session uh, and we only have a minute left. And I just thought before we finish, I did want to say thank you to you, Rukmini Mataji, for coming on. This was a, a very insightful session. Really, really appreciate it. Is there any final words of wisdom that you would like to give to our audience. Yes, um, I would say, please try to chant in a mood of longing. Try to chant Krishna's holy name uh, in that mood of longing, not in a mood of complacency that I'm so all right, I'm so entitled, I know everything. No, there should be a mood of longing that um, Krishna, please save me. I'll repeat that, uh, what I said earlier, that Prabhupada said, um, please give me strength. I am fallen. I have no strength. Please accept me. I am frail. I am trying, but I am failing. Imagine such a humble mood coming from Srila Prabhupada. So I think this is the uh, pole star of our, of our meant to be our mood in chanting, not a complacency, 
not an entitledness, mm. but a, a mood of great mood longing. Of longing. Thank you so much. So please chant in that mood of longing. And finally, on behalf of the Iskon Kitten Ministry and the World Holy Name Festival team, just want to say thank you for joining us. And thank Hare you Krishna. so, so much. Parang Vijayate Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna. <laughs>